The trip was good until it was bad and then it was good again. I see a camel! You gotta have at least one breakdown. This did not turn out like I thought it was really neat. History! I definitely made some mistakes. And I was wrong. Is that how you wanna play this? What was it? We saw a chipmunk. History! Yay! I would not mind doing a trip again. No, it's stumbling again now. Never. We're broke down on the side of the road. Best part. Greatest day of my life. It was such a big deal to him. Bye! The real bummer, guys. Diarrhea! Bigfoot lives. Wild Bill Hickok. That's the original mine entrance. Super sketchy, huh? If I've lost these keys, I don't know what we're gonna do. Yeah, I ain't never had this kind of bad luck. Buffalo, oh, buffalo, no. right here. Get through this traffic. Oh man, it's incredible. The levee broke. Every route says flooding. Oh, look at those mountains, guys. Texas Jack. That thing's awesome. Oh, Old mine shaft up there. Look, inside the shaft, are we lost in the mine? Such a beautiful view. It's like a little town. Yeah. Rusty hook. Hey, you go first. <laughs> it's like Indiana Jones. Oh, my. Life threatening flash flooding. Oh, man. <laughs> Look, there's wide urban in Dodge City. This trip just keeps getting stranger and stranger. Well, as you've seen from that intro there, we had a very eventful trip in our $1,200 motorhome. So if you haven't seen the first 1,200 miles, go back and watch that. That video is already out. So this is, we're starting out in South Dakota and we are trying to make it the rest of our 5,000 mile trip a uh, lap around America to see the Western United States. Uh, this started out as over 11 and a half hours of footage and over 2,000 videos. So I tried to cut down as short as I could. This video is packed full of action nonstop. So make sure and watch the end because there's a lot of cool stuff you're gonna like and it's pretty fast paced, especially towards the end. But here we go, we're waking up in South Dakota and we're headed towards Yellowstone. Well, it's 6 a.m. Only me and Scooter are awake. <laughs> We're about to get everybody up and we should head out of this place. Head on to uh, the Bama site, hopefully. Here's all the stuff I pulled out of my vent yesterday. This is a slightly larger than average Caucasian male hand. Can you believe all that was in there? Still perfectly full on oil. And that's with over 1,200 miles on this oil. Still hasn't used any. Morning, Rampy. Look at Lauren. She kicked my head when she woke up. <laughs> Morning, Squeezy. You sleep okay? So we didn't get a chance to do this last night. So we went through Kansas a little bit on accident. Mom's navigating. <laughs> we went through Iowa. We went through like the little edge of Nebraska. Nebraska. And then now we're in South Dakota. How many states now is that? Seven, eight, nine. We went in parts of nine states already. Unreal. Who loved me? All right, I think we're ready. Right. On to the dumping station. Okay, here we go. He's got her in his mouth. Was it everything you'd hoped for? Yeah. What, what the heck? Don't get over it before the end of the trip. I love your hair, it looks really nice this really? morning. Really? <laughs> On towards Rapid City, South Dakota. Oh my gosh, look. Oh, you can see for miles. Wow. Okay, there's a bridge. It's like all of a sudden got super bridge. I know, like all of a sudden. Literally flat and till it's like, Wow. 
It is so wide open here. Everybody's gonna comment, wind noise. I'm gonna let the big 460 breathe while we're in here and cool off. Here. Ralph, you gotta make sure there's no traffic coming. Look both ways. I think we're good. <laughs> gonna hang out in the road? You hear that? Yes. It's the music from the movie. Oh my gosh. We got the CD, don't we? We may have the cassette. Look at that guy. He's been sitting there a while. Right. Look at this saddle. Wawa. Look at that saddle. This stuff? No, no, we don't. We're good. Come on, honey. We're good. We're good. We don't know how much the rental car will hold on the way back. Look, I need something. <laughs> this is you and your mama's kind of stuff, I know. Tosh. I'm going to get something. Spark plug. Oh, spark plug airplane. Everybody needs one of them. Just think of all the things you can do with it. <laughs> oh, that's the, the fake buffaloes they were skinning and stuff in the movie. Wow. I bet they had a bunch of them, huh? Tatankas. Tatankas, yeah. Yeah, they moved the building that we're in here. I don't know, it looks like the darn 50s or 60s. This is a really neat building in here. Look at that, guys. When the other soldier shot his horse, that's it. And this is really cool. A lot of the stuff from the movie. We need that in our yard, don't we? I was wondering how they did all the buffalo skinning scenes. Oh, we're on a darn movie set. That's what it looks like. This is so cool. It's a saloon. It's a saloon We're going to. Oh. Yeah. It sounds like Jumanji. It does, doesn't it? We need to have that. Why don't we have that? I don't know. I think it's so cool. Oh, man. Look at the Buffalo Bill Wild West show. Mastodon Tusk, 43 miles northeast of here in 1996. Oh, my God. Wow. I love these sidewalks. I have to go into the salon. Either have the spitting tunes. Spitting tunes? Yeah. Hey, where I see over there. Don't be looking at that C10 over there. Don't you don't need that. another truck in your life. Oh. 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 Oh
Oh, it is so cute. You need a selfie. Hey. <laughs> It's like the little one we saw in Oatman, Arizona a few years ago. I'll take that. <laughs> Look at where we're at. It's so amazing. It, it, it knows. It knows. Oh, it's going to bite her lips off. So it's gonna have her. <laughs> Never seen any camels on any of the western movies, but what's that guy doing out there? Longhorns. How you guys doing? Hey, babies. Oh, you're rowdy, huh? Is that how you want to play this? Oh, back up. Okay. A little much. We'll leave you alone. You must be tired of tourists, huh? We definitely got to go up this, huh? This is so... It's fine. It'll be fine. We'll probably see our house from here. Wow. And you can see everything from here, huh? That's a, that's a tractor way out there, Dad. Oh, way out there that spot. You like the trains, don't you? Yeah. You the conductor? It won't work. Where is that hog pot? Well, I think it has to have steam pressure. That's your brakes, I think. Yeah. Just from movies. That's the pressure. That's yeah. the steam pressure. We saw Back to the Future. Y'all need to go to church. Look who's talking. They're having service, aren't they? <laughs> this may be the coolest little western town I've ever been in. Hello. Send your letters. Hello. You got any fan mail? 3411, you see it? We might need to take some of this with us for the other dart, for the floors, you know? Wait, where is it? That guy looks just like me? Yeah. You ain't lying, he looks just like me. This is getting too easy. Yeah, she needs time out of the motorhome. She, she's a little much in the motorhome all day. What? It's cool. The US Army appeared on the plane. I do love a good old video. History! Is there any place that you don't exit to the gift shop? Hey, that looks great on you. You look like you should be a dentist. Or something. <laughs> Leave it up to Ralphie to be eyeballing a golf cart somewhere. The key is in it. Well, we're gonna go ahead and fill up with fuel again and get back on the road towards the fossil site. So we got another 20 gallons. This time we only got 7.6 miles a gallon for some reason. I don't know why that is. I may have been driving too fast. You got miniature yeah. milk. Yeah. And I got a honey stick. That was great, wasn't it? That was totally you good. never know if stuff's gonna be like janky or like really worth stopping. That was a, lot, pretty cool. a lot of that stuff was moved here. It's like original buildings that were moved here. Be our best kid. That's a pretty cool one about. I like to catch the fish. <laughs> we got some black hills coming up. Wawa is a very good map reader. I have taught her how to read a map and directions. She always is navigating long drive. I got us to where we are today. I can't believe we're actually going to see Mount Rushmore. I know, right? I've never seen it either. I think there's a statue here of Crazy Horse as well. Well, there, I saw there was a bunch of signs for prairie dogs. Prairie dog in the real life. I've seen it. What about these move here? What are you going to do? Look at prairie dogs all day? Yes. I had a prairie dog the other day. I just barely made it to the bathroom in time. It's not the same. Oh, my God. I did, oh, jeez. Yeah, it's flipping buffalo. No way. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. That's Badlands, Walla? Scenic overlook. We gotta try this out, right? Oh, like I don't know. It's gotta That's be scenic, scenic, whatever it is. Down. Watch out for prairie dogs, okay? You're already barefoot, Squeeze? Yeah. It is hot, yeah. Is that a prairie dog trail? I don't know if there's such thing as prairie dog trails or not. I won't live here. You can. Mountain is raging. I told you. They need to have some buffalo right here on this fence row. I just love being out in these places like this where you can see in every direction forever. It's so cool. That's a prairie dog noise? That's it. You we know what to. this is? This is a prairie dog trail. Science. All right, let's let our hood down. We've been letting it air dry. Look, prairie dog. I see it. There's a bunch of prairie dogs. There's so many prairie dogs. I've never been somewhere that they bail the hay in between the interstate lanes. That's Check really us out on other platforms at Sleeper Dude 88. Well, it's time one up this hill. We got three quarters to take a fuel. I mean, we've been driving for a few hours, but not nothing crazy. It doesn't seem to matter. They get more about the same if I give less. It seems 
used to always do this at lower speeds. I turned the air conditioning off for a minute just to try to give it a break on the steel, but big long hill is fine. That's weird. I don't know what that is. So it's stumbling again now. We're on pretty flat ground and stumbling. Slower and slower. We're gonna add it to them. Maybe we can coast on the other side of this hill and find them. We're broke down on the side of the road in South Dakota. Obviously, it's back in this hole, but the fuel the fuel rails feel so hot when you touch them. I mean, it feels as hot as touching the radiator. I mean, something's getting hot and shutting down on this thing. Fuel pressure tester, we got O'Reilly's. And I think we're gonna be taking the hood off real quick to see if we can maybe cool it down that way. Pounds of fuel pressure. We only got 20 psi of fuel pressure, is the most we got. So, we definitely got an issue with the, the fuel getting hot or a regulator or something. And look, see that air, air and fuel. No, oh, I think it's getting hot and like boiling the fuel or something. Maybe getting some air over the hub. It's never been off before. Still have the paint on bolts. Well, maybe that will air cool some of the fuel and uh, we can get out of here. Please, Lord. It's not starting. Okay. Do it again. I hear the pump running. The tank doesn't feel that hot. I don't want to wear that battery out. Mm -mm. Even though, you know, we're pretty full on fuel and everything, I think I'm just going to pour extra gas we have in the can in it just to see if that helps anything. We're at actually just above three quarters of the tank. We're not, we're not far off fuel, but I want to pour the gas we have in it and see if that helps anything just to get us off the side of the road. Oh, that was interesting. Luckily, most people pulled over for me. All right, let's see what we can do. Am I buckled? Barely running. Just let it cool off now we're off that hill there's a possibility our fuel pump's going out the fuel pump's running but what's getting me is we're getting air in the fuel like most of what's coming out of that is like air and fuel sputtering out of the is gauge. there a fuel filter i don't think it's hot i don't and we're about 30 miles from the edge of rapid city so we're gonna try to let it cool off for a while see if we can get it to kick back up and go and make it to Rapid City maybe and get pulled off somewhere a little nicer than this. The back edge of the wheel tub's here. And that pump is about a foot, foot and a half back from there. The pump's about right there. Honey, I think I'm gonna mess your carpet up. <laughs> you gonna mess that carpet up. Back or anything to drop this tank out. Especially it's completely full. That's the only time you have fuel pump issues. Yeah, and that's I hope this is thin like everything else in this motorhome. I can pop stuff easily. Is the whole floor wood? Is there no metal? 
think I'm right here. So That's I was pretty just close. a little bit off. I'm at, I'm exactly the right distance. I'm glad I brought a claw, claw hammer. I can't believe this is all it's made out of. I'm trying to put a fuel pump in. I brought a spare fuel pump. We're gonna try to replace it. It's a Walbro 255 that I was gonna put in the Super Coupe, but I brought it for this just in case we needed one. Hopefully it'll fit. I could literally just sit like out here and just watch the grass and zone out with the wind. All right, I think we got to where we can pull this up. Hopefully I didn't hurt anything. I don't think I did. I don't have the fittings to take those loose. I'm gonna see if I can do this without ruining anything. I've never tried to take one loose this way, but right now it's my only option. Well, I've been picking at this fuel line more than I've picked my nose on this trip. Oh my Lord. Nothing's <laughs> happening so far. I don't wanna ruin it. So I'm thinking I'm gonna pull this up and see what I can do. Maybe I can twist it around and get to it. So this one's stripped out. And so is that one. I gotta get them out to be able to get it up out of there. My socket just flew off. So I was able to break this one bolt head off, but the other one I haven't, it's between the two fuel lines I can't disconnect. So I'm trying to break it off now because I don't have any other option. All right, I broke its head off. So now that I have the bolts out and I don't have the tool to take the fuel lines off, I'm gonna cut a Sharpie cap and try it. So we split the Sharpie cap. Maybe I can get it. It's about the right shape to do what I need to do. But these are two different size lines too. Got the big one off. Well, I've been struggling with the second one. It's a little bit smaller line, so I think I'm gonna have to trim this back. I got it. I got it off there. Okay. Can I get the pump up out of here now? Okay. Look at that. It's got, it's got cracked that. I wonder if that's what's going on. It's spraying fuel out instead of getting it up to it. So from here to the bottom is about five and a half inches. It, this pump is much taller. I don't know why this has such a tiny pump. So since this is not the factory fuel pump, I'm having to try to cut this supply line down shorter to make it fit. It's got different ends on the wires too. <laughs> Can we get helper? It's not inside the garage, so it's not scary. The side of the interstate in South Dakota is not scary. I'm afraid our pump could be a little too long and I might have to cut something down, but if it'll fit in there, and I'm hoping the fuel holes will let it move over to the side like that and it'll work the way it is. I just hate I ruined your hardwood floors. See, they'll just snap on. They're easy to put on. It's hard to take them off. Well, we got a weak spot in the floors. Don't step there. I'm not so sure that wasn't part of our... Uh, just tear it apart. It probably balloons out when the pump's on. Yep, okay, let's try it. As of right now, it's running way better than it was. I can't believe I was able to get that out. What is it doing? We made it like literally a thousand feet. Up See if that pump sounds like it's running. Run back there. Listen to it. I can't tell. Is the pump whining at all? I can't tell. It's running, but it's not. 
Does this not run out of fuel to you? Yeah. I think it has trash. You don't have like no fuel pressure. We have no fuel pressure, like less than 10. The only other option I have on the side of the road is I did buy a spare fuel filter. I'm gonna swap it out real quick. has a factory pump which we just replaced has a feed and return line goes down the rail they both go into a spin on fuel filter i took that off pulled the filter element completely out so it was no restriction cycle the key and there's no fuel getting into that there's nothing between there and there but a fuel line i've looked down the whole fuel line there's no restrictions no kinks no nothing uh past that it goes into a second pump which is running and working i didn't know even existed then it goes into a second fuel filter which i just replaced and i'm not getting any fuel to any of that well it's time to start calling record services yeah, do you have a, a wrecker that's big enough to tow a 27 foot E450 or E350 motorhome? Okay. Thank you very much. Motorhome that's 27 feet long. And I was seeing if you had a wrecker that might could tow us. There is, it's me and my wife and three kids. Well, we have a wrecker service coming to pick us up and tow this thing off the interstate to maybe a truck stop. Probably going to try to get a rental car and a motel room. Uh, what's the city we're close to? Rapid, Rapid City. Rapid City? So far, we've waited a couple hours for the tow truck to get here. They haven't showed up yet. That's 250 bucks an hour. We just called Enterprise and they have a, just a car I can rent, but I've got to figure out a way to get to the airport to get it. I still haven't found a rental vehicle big enough to put our most of our stuff in. Find enough time to either fix or sell this thing here, try to get a, a rental vehicle. I think I see our wrecker heading that way to turn around and come back and get us. Well, this is a real bummer, guys. I've tried everything I can do on the side of the road. And I hate to be having to get a record like this and get it towed away from here. My wife's really stressed out from this and I don't blame her. It's a big record, isn't it, Ralphie? Are you just gonna pull you? Yeah. It's not really nice to meet you, Dale. Oh yeah, I'm nice. like the plumber. Don't touch the shifter. Real bummer. It's gonna hurt the envelope too. Is my motorcycle gonna drag off the back? I think she'll be okay. It's not what we thought we'd be doing today, but it's okay. My poor wife, she just married the wrong guy. I was worried something like this might happen. And sure enough, it did. I feel bad for my wife because this really stresses her out. I don't wanna do that to her. That's why I called a wrecker instead of staying here any longer. He's under there pulling the drive shaft. Why don't we have to change Steve? I want to see him shift. <laughs> you never rode a big truck, have you, guys? No, no, not, no. How many gears has it got? Thirteen. Thirteen, buddy. Come on. Come on. Is it I, I heard it. Yeah, it slows it down when you let off all the throttle, I think. Well, we're at the Flying J truck stop, Rapid City, South Dakota. Uh, we're about to park it here. Oh, man. So we reserved a hotel room across the interstate over there that has a water park for the kids, just so they'll have a good trip despite their father. Can't find a, any place that'll rent us a van or a truck big enough to haul our stuff home yet. 
if we get somebody to take us to the airport, we can get a car, maybe we can find somewhere that'll rent us a big. It is sad, but at least we're at a much better place right now. It is actually a good moment. That truck is double duty. Hey, I have a question. What? How does like how does gas run out? I always wondered that. You mean in cars? Yeah. The tank gets empty. This very nice record driver is going to take my wife and kids to the motel across the street. I'm going to unload my bike and head over there to meet them. It's about to start raining. Man, tough day, tough break. Well, I was finally able to get off there by myself. So I really couldn't film it, but I got on my motorcycle when it's about to rain. Backpack on my back loaded heavy, laptop in my lap. Now we're all here. At the water park, we gotta try to find out a way to get to the airport and get our rental car and find a different rental car that we can take all the way home with all our stuff. And we're probably about to list a bunch of stuff for sale on Facebook Marketplace. Uh, we're at our wit's end with the RV. Well, I rode the motorcycle back over to the RV. A wonderful man named Joe Garcia, and that stopped on the side of the road to help us. Really can't say enough about this guy. So he's gonna give me a ride to the airport I don't want to put my wife and kids through any more on this trip. I want them to have a good trip. So trying to fix the RV, patch it up, not knowing if it's going to make it any farther is just not in the cards this time. I know I probably could fix it and go a little farther, but I might fix it and end up in the middle of Arizona or uh, Utah broke down as well. And I don't want to, I don't want to do that to my wife and kids. So, so we're here with Joe. He saved us today. He's going to take us down to the uh, airport to pick up our rental vehicle. We still got to find a rental vehicle that we can get home in, but uh, maybe they can work something out at the airport. But Joe, he's the best guy on earth right here. He's been super helpful today. He's the only person today that's time to help us. At the airport. So, so we just spent more than what we paid for the motorhome to rent a van because it's a holiday weekend. Apparently they had a huge hailstorm come through the area and wipe out a bunch of the rental cars. So the manager really helped us out and we are going to have a van to get home in now. We just got to unload our motorhome and try to sell our motorhome and try to sell the motorcycle so we can get home. It hurts my heart. I know. Because we really did put a lot of work and a lot of money into this motorhome. A tow bill to get it home oh, yeah. would cost more than, it cost us $500 to go like 30 miles. So no. it would cost more than what the motorhome is worth to get it home. So it doesn't make financial sense to tow it home. So unfortunately for this one, it's gonna have to stay in South Dakota. Look at you minivan people. This thing's still dirty. Probably gonna put our cooler on the roof, huh? Just being honest, the kids are probably gonna love this thing. <laughs> this thing has less miles than our motorhome does. Just a few less. <laughs> this is broke up here. It's nasty and beat up all over. And the brakes are super warped. Unfortunately, this does not have a trailer hitch on it. <laughs> if it did, I'd be putting a motorcycle on the back and taking it home. It's looking like we're gonna have to give somebody a deal on a motorcycle and a deal on an RV and head home. We feel really bad for the kids today. So we got them whatever they want to eat. They want Taco Bell. It's nice to have a way to get around and a place to stay, even if it's expensive. Joe's the best. He's got eight kids. Yeah, eight kids, and he comes. To, he wouldn't even take our money. Trying to pay this man. Got you some Taco Bell. Diarrhea. It's a minivan. They don't have to take I am back at the motorhome with our minivan we rented. The kids and wife are at the water park next door, having some fun. And I am trying to unload all my tools and stuff out of here, all our clothes, so we can get this thing cleaned out, uh, hopefully sell it. Why do you make you guys sad? Because I lifted up a little, trying not, and I like lost speed. Just out of my way. So I don't go back up and do it again. Well, I have been working nonstop here for about an hour trying to load stuff. Got it as much packed as I could. We listed the motorcycle on Marketplace and somebody's coming to look at it right now. So I gotta rush back over to the motel room to show it to them. Crazy life I live, huh? Who puts herself in these kind of situations? Are you having fun? Yeah. I got a bunch of stuff out of the RV. You should've. You like it? Yeah, it's right there. All right, I'll watch it. There goes Squeezy. Of course she stopped in the slide, of course. Me and the wife and Ralph, we went down there to unload the van and it starts pouring and lightning outside. So. Yeah, more good luck today, but tomorrow is looking up, you know, right? Did you really enjoy the water park? 
Yeah. All right, well, she's not on blocks yet. That's a good sign. Well, super tough day today. Luckily, all, every day is not like today. And try to have some fun tomorrow and maybe sell some stuff. We got the ice cold cooler on the roof. We didn't want to leave that thing behind. We are super duper packed in here. Well, it's the next morning. A couple people are interested in the motorhome. One guy's looked at the motorcycle. So we're trying to sell that today. We're gonna to try to see some of the cool stuff around here in uh, Rapid City today. We're at the Continental Breakfast. I'm gonna give you guys some tips, okay? If there's two waffle makers, always act like the one with less time on it was actually yours. Like if yours has two minutes and the other one has 13 seconds left, act like that one was yours. That really helps. Outrun an older lady to get to it, that also helps. All right, we're all in our soccer mom van now. Head to soccer practice, which is uh, Mount Rushmore. So that's the closest thing to where we're at right now. I see the faces. Uh, you don't see faces. I see them. A motorhome would have never made it up this hill. What was we thinking? Miners Gateway Tunnel. Wow. See, I don't see their faces. Where? Where? I see their faces. You sure you saw it? I, I swear I seen it. I wasn't looking at it. No, I right. swear, I swear I seen it. I took one glimpse of it and I just knew. It's right there. Oh, I see oh, it. Oh, I see it. I, see it I told y'all. Oh, there it is. Wow. It looks like Abraham Lincoln is kissing someone. Scooter's been really excited about seeing Mount Rushmore. Wow. It is really cool to see up close. What? Is there people up there? Oh, yeah. I think that's what Bigfoot looks All right, you heard it here first. Bigfoot. Well, we made it here. It wasn't how we planned on making it here. It's awesome. But it is really pretty. If you've never got to see Mount Rushmore like we haven't, it's worth a stop. Washington, Jefferson, Theodore Roosevelt, Abraham Lincoln. You did it, Rocky. You did it. So now we're going to do a little bit of a scenic drive to the mountains here. And uh, we may head up towards Deadwood now. Uh, old steam-powered tractor back there. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Guys, we haven't even had to use the bear spray yet. Oh, oh my god! <laughs> my one ear is like messed my, up now. My left ear is ringing a little bit. <laughs> Squeezy's still in shock. Like, I can't believe I accidentally hit that button. I thought it was bear spray the whole time. I had a bear on it. The whole trip, Ralphie's been like, that's not a bear spray. I'm like, yeah, it has a bear on it. It has a picture of a bear. <laughs> Look at that rock sticking up out of the water. Wow. It is a beautiful drive between Rushmore and Deadwood. He is struggling. Hey, you been there, buddy. Look at all the dead wood in Deadwood. <laughs> Wild Bill Hickok. Yeah, this is the town where Wild, Wild Bill Hickok, Hickok and Calamity Jane were buried. Can we go to their cemetery? Yeah. <laughs> Look at all my old Mopars. Man, this is so steep. I didn't know we needed four wheel digs. My legs are numb. Oh! I got a map, so I'm happy. That's where they're buried. Bob Bill Hickok and Calamity Jane. Jane. Murdered at a saloon here in town. Calamity oh, Jane wanted to be buried next to me. Man, it's beautiful. Do you want to go to a gold mine? Like a gold mine that has a shaft you can go inside in the yes. mountain? I saw signs for it. Okay. Didn't we? Yes. We love this road. Now here it is. I will find a piece of gold and my, my heart out. Yes. There's definitely gold in these Ziploc bags. You know I've been wanting to go inside a real mine. Okay. I've never been in a real one, really. They were some gold. Look at that. You got some gold. Yeah. You got some around? Yeah. So, right yeah. here. Oh, you all did good. Can you hear it? I didn't know your heads could get any bigger looking. Hi, my name is Emily. I'll be the tour guide. I love it. I love it. Look at what's holding this thing up. <laughs> oh, that's the original mine entrance. These poles look super sketchy, huh? See a piece of gold? Don't worry, honey. Those old two by sixes up there will hold it. I'm claustrophobic. This is working out for me. They did all this by hand, wow. Again, these were just donated to us by Homestead. 
Her name was Zelda back here. She didn't really know what to do. <laughs> Can you believe they chisel this out by hand? Yeah. You see this black thing? Oh, this is steep. That was really cool. That was so cool. My nose is cold. That was worth it. I loved it. Somewhere down here is where Wild Bill got shot. This is really cool. Yeah, there's a lot of squatches here. Oh right, Ralphie? Oh In the stagecoach? That truck is absolutely awesome. I thought you would like it. Yeah. Well, I wish we would have gotten to spend more time there. I would love to have went through the museum and stuff, but we got to get back to handle some of the stuff with the motorcycle and motorhome situation. You take them halfway across the country and they want to play in the water. So we're headed back to our motel and I'm going to see what I can fiddle with on the motorhome to maybe get it more sellable. My phone is blowing up with messages right now about the motorcycle, so. Well, we've lost the keys to the motorhome and the motorcycle and the guy's pulling up to look at it. This is about the most stressed out I've ever been in my life. I've lost these keys. I don't know what we're gonna do. Okay, well we just dodged a big bullet there. My wife found the keys in the van in between the seats. So a guy just came and left me a deposit to buy the bike. So he's supposed to come back in a few hours and get it. We have sold it way too cheap. And maybe we can get the motorhome sold this evening or tomorrow and try to head back home. So hopefully we're done with the motorcycle drama. He should show back up in a few hours to get it. Sad to see that thing go. Found the keys. That's awesome, and I found the lost toothpaste. We will all be in a better shape now. Now we just need to sell a camper and we can leave. We got this, it's all right. I'm gonna go check on the motor home real quick and see if I can work any magic just to get it run enough to try to sell it. I'm just mad I haven't seen a buffalo. <laughs> or an elk. Buffalo. If I see right. it, I'm going to salute. How come all the other motor homes left? <laughs> Is it possible that the fuel pump, or if it's kinked over the hose, so I'm gonna lift this thing up just a little and see if we get fuel pressure, just enough to maybe get this thing running to sell it. Yeah, look, it doesn't have any pressure trying to push up on it. All right, let's just try it for fun. It started. Is it gonna stay running? What the heck? It's sitting here running fine running for right now so we sent an apb out to everybody that was interested <laughs> on marketplace and told them that it was running again so first guy that gets here is going to get a deal on the motor home. so i'm getting the drive shaft hooked back up now so at the very least this thing should be lot drivable now today and yesterday has really burnt me out on the idea of trying to drive this anywhere else with these issues if it was a normal size vehicle if it was a car or something then you can get towed cheaply or get it home cheaply on a trailer rent a u-haul and tow it home I would do it, but I'm not gonna do it with this with my wife and kids. Wife is not the nicest when she's broke down on the side of the road, just saying. Well, we had a guy come by and look at it, but he was just a casing kicker. He didn't even walk in the camper or bring any money. I started it up for him. I should've got it on video. I started up for him and it ran for like one minute and died. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, um, we still have a problem. Whatever it is, we don't know what it is. Wife and kids are going to the water park next door. I have so many people messaging me, I can't even keep up with who's who. There's two or three different guys say they're on their way. We'll see. Man, I need to sell this thing bad. I don't want to have to deal with this again tomorrow. Well, major bummer. I've had four guys look at it now. Nobody wants to buy it. Guy offered me 500 bucks, a couple guys. I don't know, hopefully somebody comes through with this real soon because it's not looking good. So now I got guy number five coming to look at this thing. Maybe five's the charm. I would sleep a whole lot better tonight if this thing was sold. Man, I am super bummed he didn't buy it either. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I know you guys usually don't see me like this, but this has been a tough couple days. So I'm gonna call the wife to come pick me up and we're gonna figure this thing out somehow. Still got several guys messaging me. I'm headed back to sell the motorcycle right now. He's coming to pick it up. When I was home, I was dying to travel. Now that I'm traveling, I'm dying to get home. Oh my gosh. Tough day. Okay, well we got the motorcycle sold, and I forgot to video them pulling away, unfortunately. Back here in the water park, trying to enjoy some time with the kids this evening. So. We're gonna um, go three people at a time, because I saw them do it with a parent. I'm gonna do it before Ralphie comes. Okay. You want me to go down the toilet? Yeah. Wait, I'm pretty sure there could be three people on there. Yeah. Alright, well let's hit it. 
They better hurry up and slide. Somebody called and said they're gonna have to buy the motorhome, so we'll see. Well, incredibly, the only person that came and looked at the motorhome because of my YouTube post is coming back to buy it. He had a friend that watches the channel while we were on the water slides. He uh, told me to call him and he made me an offer and I accepted it, so YouTube came through for us. I don't know how this is possible. We've sold the motorhome and our dog, Scooter, has locked the van, our rental car, with the keys in it. It's my fault. We're trying our best to get him to unlock us here. But I just called the towing company that towed this thing here and they're gonna send a guy over here to unlock it. I'm telling you, I ain't never had this kind of bad luck. Okay, so here's what happened. We called the towing company and they were sending somebody out. You and can't then make this stuff up. You cannot. Like you just... He locked it and then he hopped up and unlocked it. I heard it click and I ran and grabbed the door. He ruined us and then he saved us. Thank the Lord and Greyhound this wonderful man, who's a friend of a guy that watches our channel in Indiana, has bought this thing. That is incredible. We are so happy. So if you have a $1,260 motorhome and you spend five grand on it in three weeks of your life, you can sell it for $1,500. Well, this was the last night we had a room. And we're about to pack this van at full. Yeah. All you have to do is keep marking down the price. Somebody will buy it oh eventually. My gosh. Buy it. We left mattresses, blankets, yeah. food, all kinds of we stuff. We have because we can't haul it home. A water park counts as a bath. Oh, okay. No, it's not. It's the exact same you thing as a bath. So Scooter locked the door and then he got back up there after like 20 minutes and unlocked it. And mom no. grabbed the door. No. You can't make it up, right? Unbelievable. Are we gonna have to leave? Yeah. Are you a little girl or a grandma? I'm both. Not being able to find the keys today for a while was, I'm telling you, like, here, I thought, I'm not gonna be able to get in the RV and sell it or the, or the motorcycle. I'm gonna live here in South Dakota at the Flying J. Yeah, I'm feeling a little bit better now. But we kept the Vanyas, and that's what counts. There was no one at the Waffle Maker. This day's starting out great. I mean, I've never seen no one at the Waffle Maker. So we had a meeting here. We want to see something on this trip more than just what we saw on the way here. Head down towards Denver. From Denver through Kansas. You guys comfy? We got our stack to the roof in here, but I'm really surprised that what we did keep was able to fit in here. Well, at least Ralphie has saved his tiny milk jug. He's, yeah. he's taking it home with him. And I thought I was going to have to drive this whole trip. Custer State Park. This herd started out as only 36 buffalo, and now there's 1,400. Wow, I hope we see some of them 1,400. We better. Might you have buffalo in your buffalo park? <laughs> buffalo, oh, buffalo, no. right here. <laughs> Stop right here. See him? He's flopping around the dust. Look how big his head is. Look right there. His head's enormous. Well, maybe there's some more around here. There he is. Whoa. Oh my gosh. Like Look at that big boy. I can't believe how big his head is. Man, it's so much bigger than a, a cow. What's he? He's going back down. Look at that furry face. Look at him. I just love that. That's crazy. There's got to be more, right? Tatonka. His head is so big. Yeah, he has like the biggest, furriest head ever. Oh, you must be talking about yourself. <laughs> yeah, tell us the difference between a buffalo and a bison. Oh, there's one right there, guys. He's like rotten there. Yes, he is. That is definitely the closest I've been to one. I could probably run over and get on his back. Look, these guys are used to some snacks. We're not getting anything. Look at that. <laughs> That's my <all> mama. <laughs> Who knew prairie dogs is what she likes so much? I thought they were just going to scream. I love you. They're so cute and they have noises. And... Well, guys, I think we're at the end of the loop here. Whoa. Oh my God. Oh my God. What the heck? Oh my God. Oh my God. The honest oh 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 They're everywhere. We saw there's, two, and there's like a bazillion. Look, there's babies. That's amazing. We we start leaving the park, and they're everywhere.
This is living the dream right here for me. I absolutely love this. It's probably gonna take a minute to get through this traffic. Hey, buddy. Selfie in with the buffalo. <laughs> it's a wow. How incredible is this, huh? It's amazing. But they're leaking into all this stuff on the ground. <laughs> okay, I totally changed my opinion of uh, our experience here. I was worried that we were only going to see one or two uh, bison or buffalo here. That's, That's amazing. If you get a chance to go through Custer National Park, please do it. Uh, if you like seeing stuff like that, because that was incredible. Oh, it's it's bighorn sheep, isn't it? This is the best thing ever. Nothing to see here. Think about them buffalo, Judy. He's not on a go. Oh my gosh, there is another what? herd. What wow, look how many there are. Wow, yep. wow, that's as big as the other herd. This is the first time I've stood somewhere with no fence between me. How cool is this? What a beautiful place. You ever think we'd see something like that? No, no. What a beautiful place to see, huh? It is amazing. We're headed towards Hot Springs. We may try to see the Mammoth site if we have time. That's where we were originally going the day we broke down. Having a very nice day. Oh boy, I'll get the bear spray out again. Oh, oh my please. God, no, no, no. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. Let's creep down there. I can't see it for your hair. He's invisible right now. Oh, my dad's jokes are finally back. Well, instead of, oh, Father McCarthy! Ah! I was not doing that exactly. You were, you were, you was panicking. You were, 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 this thing's even got the case and killer 9000 mounted to the back of it. It's exactly what we need. What in the world? Look at that. There's the jail, 1888 jail. Oh, you want some gelato? So we're about to pull up in the pool. Oh, that was a big dip. Okay, we're about to pull up at the mammoth site with my wife driving. Oh my gosh. And, uh, So this is the best fossil site in North America. Yeah. Look at that. Wow. This is where they were digging when they found them. It's just like Jurassic Park, huh? That's incredible. Look at that one in the middle. Look at that big tusk there. They're still digging here every day. Look at all the tusks in this area. Look, that's how big they are. Four meters. 
I love the way this thing's built. It's incredible. Right over here, you can see how it moves it along. It's like a topography map. And where do you exit through? Always the gift shop. I need this prairie dog in my life. <laughs> so I don't know about everybody else, but I love that. That was good. They said the hot springs here in town are underground hot springs, so it's not really a great place to access them. So uh, we may have to find a hot spring somewhere else. Uh, that yeah, was we awesome. Did. Very cool. We're gonna head towards Cheyenne, Wyoming. Uh, then from there, down towards Denver, Colorado. See where we end up tonight. So their hay bales are wrapped American like American flag, flag strings. I've never seen that before. You don't get any more American than that, I don't think. No. Unless there's an eagle landing on it, then that would be more American. No. This is Carl's mom of his life. <laughs> We're in Wyoming. We made it to another state. Woo! I don't know what's going on. I took over driving duties here in Wyoming now. You promise not to be on me if I'm asleep. I, I will definitely not video you asleep. I would never do that. Nice. Nice. You see so far. What are these little, they're not fences. What are they? It's like a bunch of pounds stacked. Look at that Jeep. Look at that case. Why are the police blocking the road? Are we like the last one to get through or something? We got a flash flood warning. I don't know. They got bags, like sandbags. Really? What if it's for the water? Or Are they stopping people from going the way we came? Yes. I guess they're expecting a monsoon or something. Uh, we better get out of here. They're bringing semi trucks in now with sandbags. And they're stopping people from the way we just came from going that way. Yeah, these trucks just one after the other bringing dirt in here. So we haven't seen a choke and puke since Rapid City. A what? A choke and puke. What are you talking about? There is not a restaurant in sight between Rapid City and wherever we're coming into. <laughs> we're hoping we find one real soon. Is it too soon for me to ask if we're going to find it a better uh, home? I'll probably be listing the mini when he when I get home. <gasps> no, 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 no. You don't want no more bologna? <laughs> so I talked to some locals here at Burger King and they tell me that the levee broke a couple towns back and they're expecting all the water to flood down this way. So we are gonna try to get out of here as soon as possible now since I just found that out. I put in directions in my phone. Every route says flooding. So just this whole area is in flood warning right now. Not good. Is water coming up out of the system already? Wait, that's a storm over there. Yeah. I got, I put orange juice in my milk cart. Rain over there. It's starting to rain on us. Here's a blue C8. That's how oh. I liked it. Oh, yeah? Yeah. We're actually coming into Cheyenne, Wyoming now and I think we're out of the flood zone, I hope. Uh, we're gonna drive now, hopefully into Denver, and if we can, we're gonna try to get past Denver towards like Leadville, oh, and up on top of the Continental Divide this evening. Well, we just missed a sign on video, but we're in Colorado now, so. Woo! That's a lot of mountains. Yes, it is. Now we're coming into Denver, Colorado at five o'clock on a Friday. Oh, you got your brakes on over there? Uh -huh. yeah, look at those mountains, guys. Is it, oh my is it raining or snowing up there? There's snow on top of that mountain. Is that snow or rocks? That's snow. Okay, back up the mountain again. Oh That's for sure snow, yeah. And look, it's above the tree line. Going in the mountain. What? The mountain we're no. looking at. This, I don't think I've been in a tunnel this long. Have you? This it's is scary. definitely the farthest this I've been through. I'm getting uh, claustrophobic. This is so long. Alright, so we're getting off here at Silverthorn, Colorado, and we're gonna spend the night here. It's really pretty. Colorado. Yeah. Like the, yeah. the Rockies. Yeah, it's really pretty. It's like the prettiest mountain I've ever seen. 
Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going in the bunk bed. I'm That's cool. That's awesome. I'm on top. No, I'm on top. Yeah, I'm just glad today went good. No breakdowns. First day of driving somewhere different that we didn't have any trouble, so. But right now, we gotta go to the pool, of course. Oh my God, it's cold. It's like 32 degrees. We'll get in the van and turn the heat on. Look at that, though. The heat? That's so weird. I know, the we heat the in air. July. Well, we're pulling into Leadville right now. This town is famous for being a major mining boom town. Leadville is also famous for people like Texas Jack, who died here. Uh, Doc Holliday lived here right after the shootout in the OK Corral. And uh, unsinkable Molly Brown. Uh, she moved here when she was 18, met her husband, and made a fortune here. Yeah. Arrive at Evergreen Cemetery. So this is where Texas Jack is buried. He died here after performing in the uh, Buffalo Bill Cody Wild West show. Oh, here it is. Oh, Texas there's, Jack. There's money on top of it. Texas Jack, a Mahondro. That, that was erected by Buffalo Bill Cody. He was buried in Denver, Cody was. So here's the National Mining Museum. Let's see what's here. It's like an engine. You see like the lobes on it, pick those rods up and down. Mine check. Oh, man. They ain't gonna stop me. <laughs> Look, inside the shaft is full of gravel and stuff now. Wouldn't you like to go in it? Yes. You guys wanna go in the Mining Hall of Fame Museum? Yeah. Look at those, what are those? It's a diamond. Oh, wow. Oh, Jesus, Mikey. That's unbelievable that it even exists. Squeezy loves anything with push buttons that talks to her. How is there anything that looks like that? 1923 Wills, St. Clair. You need one of them, don't you? You could do some serious digging. Ice Palace. So it says in 1896, they built an ice palace here. That's a picture of it up there to the right, a real picture. That would be so cool to see. Yeah. Are we lost in the mine? You need to do that, and we'll stand here. This is discovery in Leadville. Look how big that is. It's huge. 24 ounces. Is it cool? No. It's a real dinosaur track that they cast, they found in a, in a coal mine. Oh my gosh. You always gotta go out to the gift shop, don't you? They talked me into some rocks of their own in here. So I guess that's easier than going mining for them, huh? Mom's been out here on scooter duty. She's asleep in the car. Hey baby, you taking that? I'm not gonna look at the murder hornet got in here. A murder hornet? Huh, awesome. Why did y'all get me? I, I never realized how many different types of rock there are. Ralphie spotted a train over here. He's got to see it. He loves the trains. I like all of them. Yeah. Under 331,000 pounds, built in 1906 by the American Locomotive Company. That thing's huge, isn't it? Best Wild West Saloon in America. So at one point, this was the second largest city in Colorado, as this was the most famous silver mining town in the country. Oh, look over here, look over here. Dad, look at that wagon. I bet the motorhomes, I bet they were on a trip too. <laughs> they left them here probably. There's a Mustang coupe there. I think this may be a Studebaker Lark station wagon. We gotta see about the old wagon here. So. Daytona. It's a Lark. I was right. It's a two-maker Lark wagon. Just $27,000. It's got an LT1 swap. That's a cool car. Wow. Corvette engine. I love that wagon. Isn't that cool? It's very cool. And the back comes... Yeah, he said it's got a retractable roof in the back. That's so cool. Yeah. Oh, man. It's, it's so cool. It's front end. It's so cool. That's what cool. in the world? Look in front of us. That's an old mine shaft. Can we go in? Look at this truck here shovel truck or whatever i know look at that old mine shaft up there i would definitely want to look inside there that is really neat i'd love to know the name of the mine look at the old ladder going up the logs uh, that thing's four wheel drive too ralphie yeah that thing's awesome look at that old gal look at this old building top of the old mine shaft not a hot spring cold spring figured that out coming out of leadville 
towards Buena Vista and it kind of cuts back east. So this is the farthest point west we're probably gonna be on this trip. We're about 1,500 miles from home. So every mile from here on out is a mile closer home. It's such a beautiful view. All the horses, there's a bunch of horses over there and then the mountains behind them. So look how cool it looks. So we got an outhouse. All right, is the tallest mountain in Colorado. It's over 14,000 feet high. Oh wow! Right. Oh my god! What the heck? It's like a little town. Yeah. Well, about the barn. Uh, Left alone. <laughs> wow. It's fenced off. Like they don't want nobody in, huh? No. Oh, it's oh. It's what is that? About to be turning right to go towards the Mount Princeton Hot Springs. There's your uh, old Dodge truck, honey. Yeah, hello. Uh, it looks boarded up. The old schoolhouse. I love the no guardrail roads. Oh, yeah. the mountains. Oh. We're about to see if the hot springs are hot or cold. Cold. Thank you. This thing's hitting cold. It's a little too hot. Oh, my God. <laughs> Zero high in this spring. So we did a little bit of Googling. This time of year in the middle of the summer, the snow melt runs down and cools off the creek. You guys, you need to come here in the winter time to feel a hot spring. That's unfortunate, we tried. Everybody outvoted me on going to St. Elmo Ghost Town, which is another 30 minutes or so west of here. Since you can't go in the buildings, they're not interested, so. That's a cool building. Isn't it? Come on, you slow pup. Let's go to Colorado Springs. I thought it was Spring City. That's in Tennessee, you ding dong. Rusty hook. Look, honey, there's an RV for sale. The scenery's changing again out here. It's so weird how it changes. Woo! It's not blue. Is it? Yeah. Yes. It is. Yep. Sure enough. No way. Can we walk up to the fence? It looks like they're like. Everybody hey, you go first. <laughs> now they're, they're a lot smaller, aren't they? Look at their heads are so much smaller. I think they're like a cow and a buffalo. Look how they're shedding right now. They must be mixed with cattle for sure. Still cool to see them, huh? Yeah. You got this. What in the world are these bicycles? Look at all them trucks. Packed on the roof. Yeah, I thought we were doing it for Dale. Look at them. <laughs> There's some old mining equipment left behind. It's funny all that stuff that got left behind. We are going to try to go to the Manitou Cliff Dwellings, which is uh, some Indian ruins that are up here. We might go off and try to go to Dodge City on the way. I'm excited. Oh, I do see the edge of them right there. Right there, you can barely see them. Got some for sure tourists right there. It's pretty neat, huh? We need one of these, don't we? Man, how cool is this? It's really neat. Wow, can you imagine living in this? I'm tall. Wow. Winnebago ads that were made here. 64 Nova ad that was made here. This is crazy. Yeah, I think you're right. It's like Indiana Jones. Really cool place if you get a chance to see it. You know, the most unbelievable thing about all this talk, uh, you don't exit to the gift shop. That's true. It's unbelievable. So we decided as a family that we were gonna go to see Dodge City, Kansas. Uh, Dodge City was where Wyatt Earp was right before he went to Tombstone. Bat Masterson was there for a while. We're coming into another storm here. It keeps 
lightning really close to us here. See in that direction almost there's cows. I grew up on a cattle farm. That's the most cows I've ever seen in one place right there. Not good conditions going by, is it? There's not even shade. Colorado, mm -hmm. and we eat some Taco Bell, so. Cinnabon Delights, eh? Yeah. What's inside of them? Heaven. I didn't realize they sold 85 octane down here. I've been buying this water for the <laughs> last, last few stops. I mean, I don't care what this rental car I'm running off of, but. Cool old train Thanks up there. Is that a train car just like suspended there? That's what it looks like, doesn't it? down the corner oh man oh that's a mark 7 lincoln a malibu Probably so. Wow. It's just the dust on those cows. Well, it's not time. 
is. I'm ready for bed. Dodge City, city limits. We're here. Oh, I'd love to have that sign. Thunderbird Motel. Oh, that would be cool to have. 10.20 at night. We finally made it to Dodge City. <laughs> what is going on out here? I didn't expect it to smell like cows when you just got here. Yeah. <laughs> Same guys. This must supposed to be the cruising area. Look, Camaro Mustang 350Z. Even though it went through a hell storm. I'm pretty sure I'm a tornado. Yeah, and uh, another flood zone. But we made it here, so hopefully there's some cool stuff in Dodge City in the morning. All right, well, it's early the next morning in Dodge City. They just had the single wall from Maker, and that's tough times, but we got a couple. And now we're going to see what we can see in Dodge City, and I haven't shaved yet. How cool is this? We are staying on White Earp Boulevard. It says 100 in one month killed 3,000 buffalo. Isn't that crazy? Look, there's White Earp statue. Dodge City Lawman, 1876-1879. Before he went to Tombstone. This is where he lives. So it says over 4 million head of cattle were driven up the Santa Fe Trailhead in Dodge City between 1875 and 1886. 1,000 semi-truck loads of cattle a day. Oh, there's one Here's uh, Matt Dillon from Gunsmoke. Check out this train, Ralphie. Yeah. This looks pretty neat, doesn't it? Boot Hill? We'll, get in it. we'll see. Built in 1903. Oh, wow. How do they know what all those did, huh? It says this train traveled over a million miles in its life. Who wants to play cards with Doc Holliday? <laughs> Hidden gun under the table. So I guess we're going to go into the Boot Hill Museum here. I'll above you. I've never seen a wagon that big. Oh yeah, Squeezy loves the buttons in the museums. Oh, welcome to Hoover Salute. Floor shakes from the herd. Got the wooden sidewalks over here and everything. Hey, yeah. <laughs> People can't go up there. I didn't expect to walk in with the music and everything. The gunfighter over here. That's what my facial hair is gonna look like in a week. Why did they need two holes if there's no divider? What are you gonna do? Just talk? Look how rough the floors are. That's worse than our first house. You like these old houses, don't you? Oh, yeah? <laughs> every week you take a bath, just like Ralphie. <laughs> Man, those are pretty, aren't they? Back when kids play with marbles. The girls talk me into some taffy in the general store. That's pretty cool, though. Are you ready to see a real gunfight? A 100% real gunfight. It would be cool if there's gunshots in the saloon and then they just run out and yeah. start shooting. You come back here! It was louder than I expected. All you gotta do is exit through. Exactly. Well, I enjoyed that. I like that gunfire. I know it's that's pretty uh, touristy, but it was neat to see it. At least. Well, I thought it's gonna be like one person, like one shot, one shot. Yeah, not story. not everybody. The girls out of the saloon and everything. I know, right? In case you're wondering, we're getting 22 miles a gallon this hog. <laughs> she is the worst navigator. Three or four times now, we made the wrong turn because she wasn't looking at what it said. So now we're we're right at a thousand miles from home right now. So Squeezy was pretty upset at the gunfight. Yeah. Why? I thought they were all dead. His heads were down there dying. Oh, you thought they were really getting shot? Yeah, and I started crying. Like, Listen, they announced beforehand that they're using blanks. Of course, Squeeze. Listen, you, you can't just eat cosmic brownie. You gotta set it on the dash, uh, let her warm up, and then it's ready. There's just certain things in life you can't rush, and eating a cosmic brownie on the road is one of those things. It's been up here about an hour or so. That's the perfect 112 degrees Fahrenheit. We're good to go now on this one. 
out. Definitely worth the wait. Are we in Wichita? I don't know. You think you could drive us home? Yes. Can I drive you around the parking lot? No, you can't drive around the parking oh, lot. No. You don't have a driver's license. Clear that in. That is the biggest fireworks tent I have ever seen. It's humongous. It's a big old flag out there. It's like a Walmart. Man, these roads are straight out here. Oh, we're back in the rain again. I think I see a rainbow. Oh, it's, like it's, it. it's starting to look like a double rainbow. Are you kidding me? Flash, flash flood warning issued for our area. This is the third time we have drove through an area with a flash flood warning. I'm be afraid to get on a plane right now. I know, I wouldn't get on a plane. <laughs> nope, I would not get on a plane on this trip, no. I got tired, so Scooter's gonna drive for a while. What is he mad about? You, you squeaked the windows and then he's seen that truck. Did you see him jump when he came on? He's so scared. <laughs> when the whoppers come on, like they're gonna hit him. We're back in Missouri, kids. Woo! Mocan Dragway, so it's right on the Missouri-Kansas state line. Too bad they're not running. I feel like that's the mistake we made, was not buying an RV <laughs> with an airbrush mural on the back. Absolutely. Nothing could have happened wrong. I don't see how we could have went wrong in that case. Absolutely. But you live and learn, you know? We could drove a little bit farther, but uh, there really wasn't any towns past here to stay in. So this is the last major town for some. Oh my gosh, oh. you do go through wow. the exits? This is a swank motel. Where, where did you get the money for this? Oh my gosh, what did this cost? You burn off your influence. She shredded it. For sure. Oh, look at you. <laughs> you done got above your raisin. You definitely got above this your raising. This is cheaper than where we stayed in Colorado. Look at this place. They won't even let us in here. Damn. What is she doing? <laughs> this is a problem. Did you did you refinance the house? <gasps> what is going on with y'all? <laughs> Are you having a seizure? This is what Scooter does when we put him on the bed. has gotten the swagger. Yeah. This is his tradition when he gets in the bed. I don't know what he's doing. Look at your hair. What do you guys want to eat? Cracker barrel. Steak and shake. Freddy. Cracker that sounds bear. about Freddy's, right. I Three answers. I got my arm mad bulged out holding on over here. <laughs> you drive like a maniac. Okay. That's why I have drove. <laughs> You're doing burnouts in the minivan. <laughs> Manna from wow. heaven. Oh, oh God. What are you doing? You're Where have that. you been my whole life, sweetheart? What a beauty. Right yeah, we can park We can park right here. It's fine with me. Well, it comes with them vacuum caps. Fancy room, fancy food. What are you talking about? So we were able to make it just a little more than 400 miles today. And we are still about 600 miles from home. Oh, so we're getting closer. I joked that when we got back, Scooter would have locked us out. There's no way. I'm literally locked out. <laughs> How many times can we get locked out or something on this trip? Don't say it. He's right there. Scooter, I'm only. He had a song on his back. Scooter, you know what? I don't know how that happened. That's all I'm saying. That's my favorite pet we have. Really? Yeah. <gasps> what just happened? Did the power go out? Yeah, what in the world? I'm telling you, this the, trip, seriously, how are we supposed to get out of our room? This trip just keeps getting stranger and stranger. I don't know what's going on. Scooby, did you do it? All right, well, it's the next morning. We're going down to the Continental Breakfast. This place probably has lobster tail, I was guessing. What's, what's going on here? <laughs> We're all a little tired this morning. Well, prepared for this. Look at all this stuff. I thought we was at Shoney's. All right, let's get home. What do you say? Rocky will be excited. Rocky will be very excited so to see fine. us. It's looking more and more like home around here. Yes, it is. Sleeping babies. Is it 
the Ohio River? This is kind of a narrow bridge. It's a sketch. It's a rain right now. It's kind of a crazy setup. Isn't yeah. It? We're in Valley County. Welcome to Kentucky. Woo! We didn't even get a woo out of Wawa. What? I didn't hear. I was listening. Do it again. Woo! You have slushies with sharks in them. Wow, that's aggressive. So while we were at Sonic right here, Scooter locked the van again. This is number four. I don't know why. Five. We you can't guys, do it. I, think you think it's five. I left the keys in, but the windows are down. What was that fourth time he locked it? I think. You think it's the motel and the hotel room. Yeah, I think four times he's How locked the van lock on us now. But Chris luckily, we were only locked out once because the windows were up. Hey, what about my bed? We left it in the RV. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what we're gonna do about your bed. I don't know. We'll have to figure something out. We, we have no camping chairs anymore. We left several things. Blankets, comforters, pillows. Oh, guys, we're finally back in Tennessee. Yay. Woo! Last time for that one. We're coming in Chattanooga, and Scooter is very scared about it. I want to go to Florida. That's my boy. Oh, I can oh, see our God. yard from here. Yay. Oh, my God. We don't have to get towed again. Woo -hoo. I see our other motorhome. Uh. <laughs> we're finally home. Your daddy's here. It looks like it. Where's the Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! <laughs> Please let me out of the car. We have so much stuff to unload. We gotta go make sure Rocky and the pigs are out. Right. Right, we got a loaf of bread here for the babies that have been waiting on us. There's Rocky. Look, we got Rocky, Rocky Jr. 1, Rocky Jr. 2, Rocky Jr. over there. Granny, how you doing? How you chewing that with no teeth? Puddin's having some bread. Look at look at all the Rocky babies over here. I think you had less stressful time than we did out here. What are you playing with bucks already? He's a good girl, Puddin. <laughs> oh, it's nice to be home though. It's always good to be on vacation and it's always nice to be home. Oh my gosh, that was a lot of stuff to unload. I should have just bought this thing. It'd been cheaper. <laughs> We've had some baby chickens. All the hats, baby chicks while we were going? I told you they would. Look at that. It's got a little yellow spot on its head. <laughs> we saw. Let me start over. A ton of prairie dogs and a bunch of buffalo. They're really cool too. Mostly tons of prairie dogs, my favorite things ever. Dad was really, really, really stressed out the whole time. I really liked South Dakota, that was really pretty. Prettier than I thought it would be. I really liked the Gateway Arch, that was really cool too. I didn't think it was that big. I would not want to do the trip again here because that was, I mean, maybe if we had like one that we knew that was like ready to go. <laughs> We didn't really know if that one was ready or not. We did it anyways, and it was kind of like, <gasps> I like the van better because you, you could count on the van to get you somewhere. I wasn't sure if we were gonna make it with a motorhome. I learned about wider, how many buffaloes were killed, and a lot of stuff that I can't really think about right now. And the worst part of the trip was breaking down. You didn't think it was gonna happen, and then we thought it was gonna get better, and then it didn't get better, and then we rode in the back of the um, tow truck in his sleeping area. That was pretty interesting also, very interesting. 12 or 13 semi trucks that honked. That was pretty awesome. That was like the best part also. The trip was good until it was bad and then it was good again. So you gotta have at least one breakdown. We had like three, but that's okay. Oh man, what, <laughs> what a trip. This did not turn out like I thought it was going to. I think the kids, and the wife had a lot of fun doing the things we did. But the two days in South Dakota were absolutely a nightmare for me. The first day, even though we made it like 600 miles, when it stumbled there towards the end of the day, I was second guessing every decision I had made up until that point. I think I definitely made some mistakes. I probably shouldn't have rushed it so much. The reason we did was the kids were going on a church trip. So we had to leave when we did, that was probably too soon to leave in a motor home that I hadn't had more time to work on. And when it stumbled, going to Fall Creek Falls on our test run, I guess I should have looked more into that, but I wasn't even sure what it had done. It just did it just barely. In my mind, I thought, I'm gonna be tough on it going through 
Chattanooga and up Mont Eagle Mountain. And if it'll make it up Mont Eagle Mountain with the air on, foot to the floor the whole way, then it'll make it across the entire country. I thought if we were gonna break down, we would break down, you know, outside of Chattanooga and I could get it towed back home. That's what I thought. The whole middle of the country that's flat, if it pulled these mountains, then we're fine. And I was wrong. And I'm glad we did the trip. I'm glad I went through with it, but it's the most stressful trip I've ever been on for the two days in South Dakota and probably that first night there on the road was super stressful for me. I'm used to driving junk cars and going on trips in junk cars, but I underestimate how stressful it would be to be in a 30 foot long motor home, broke down on the side of the interstate with your three kids and wife. I don't know how much that transferred over to video for y'all, but the four hours on the side of the interstate was extremely stressful to everybody. The thought that I had to protect my wife and kids and keep them safe and we have no way to go anywhere and we're in the middle of South Dakota on the side of the interstate was uh, more stressful than I thought it would be. But yeah, definitely some mistakes were made. I, I probably should have put more work into trying to fix the motorhome, even if it was just to sell it. But the reason I didn't was because I didn't want to ruin the trip for them because it was not intended as a trip for the video as it was a trip for my kids to get to go on a, a tour of the western america on their summer break so i did not want to spend their whole time off with me working on a motorhome at a flying j truck stop i do wish i would have tried a couple more things thinking about it now a few days later i wish i would have bought like a 20 something foot roll of fuel injection rubber hose put it on the sending unit put it on the fuel rail and seeing if it would run. Uh, I wish I would have done that. My whole thought process was, uh, it was very stressful on my wife to be broke down like that. She hates being broke down on the side of the highway and I didn't want to fix the motor home and drive it another thousand miles and be in the middle of the Arizona desert or Utah or something with you know no cell service in sight and 110 degree heat. In July and be stranded out there and have to drive the motorcycle and leave my wife and kids in the middle of the desert so that was my thought process on why I did not continue the trip in the motorhome I hated losing the motorhome and losing a ton of money on it I mean I probably lost $3,500 on the motorhome I mean I probably lost a thousand bucks on the motorcycle too I sold the motorcycle for a thousand dollars I sold the RV for $1,500 Probably a little bit of a rush decision. Probably should have worked on it more, but I just wanted the kids to have a good trip. You know, if I would have worked on the motorhome that next day, all day, trying to fix it, we wouldn't have been able to go to Mount Rushmore that day. We wouldn't have been able to go in the gold mine. We wouldn't have been able to go to Deadwood. Would I do the trip again? I don't know if I would do it in a big motorhome like that, unless it was a nice motorhome. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, maybe one day. Seeing the buffaloes in Custer, that was incredible. Uh, that's probably at the top of my list. Going in like Deadwood, Leadville, Dodge City. It was really neat to be able to go through that little mine in Deadwood. I really enjoyed that. I would definitely recommend that to anybody. We went in some really cool museums for sure. And just to be in the spots where guys like Wyatt Earp, Doc Holliday, Wild Bill Hickok had been, that was really neat. I wish it would have went better as far as breakdowns, but I'm glad we made the best of it. We're fortunate that we broke down where we did in South Dakota, outside like the only major city, and just happened to break down where we got towed across the street from a water park for the kids. It could have been a lot worse. I feel bad about it. Uh, I feel bad that the trip got shortened. And I feel bad that my wife and kids got broke down on the side of the road for half a day while I'm ripping the floor out trying to put a fuel pump in it. I really thought that would fix it and we could continue on with our trip, but it didn't work out that way. We still had fun. The kids had fun at the water park and hopefully a lot of that stress didn't transfer over to them. It's funny how you take them all the way across the country and they want to go to a water park instead of, you know, seeing something amazing. A little 1880s tourist town was really cool. I really enjoy seeing the American West and a lot of the cowboy stuff that we saw in movies growing up. That is really neat to see. We saw some buffalo and prairie dogs and like bighorn sheep. They were cool. What was that? We saw a chipmunk. That was also cool.
I was not as stressed out as dad at all. I was fine. I mean, I wish it would have like went better, but my favorite place we went was probably the mine where we panned for gold. And I liked going to see the buffalo where we saw like a big herd of them. I wish the hot springs weren't cold. I'd like to do this trip again, but in a more reliable car. I thought it would have made it, but it didn't, so. I liked the van better. It was so much more reliable and fast. I did not know that Wider went to Dodge City. That was different. The worst part of the trip was probably when we broke down. I did not like that at all. I liked going in the mine. I think that was my favorite part of the trip. We got, I think, 13 or 12. I think we got 12 semi-trucks to honk. What city did we break down in? Kansas. How many miles did we drive? 1,506. How much do you think a motel room costs? 20 bucks. How much money do you think we lost on the motorhome when we sold it? About a few hundred dollars. What state were we in when we were looking at the mountains? Uh, California. Can you name some of the cities we stopped at? Pittsburgh. I don't have no idea. Groundhog. No, no, not Groundhog. Buffalo. Bison. Groundhog? No. Some land, 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 up, dog land. So, my favorite place that we went was. Um, all right, tomorrow, I would not mind doing a trip again. Never. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. What new things did you learn about? That's probably... Nothing. I actually don't know anything. No. <laughs> I, think, I think I know less. The worst part of my trip was breaking down the side road in the hot heat. Hot. Best part was when we went to that motel with the water slide. Best part. Greatest day of my life. Uh, 12 or 13. It's in my tricks. <laughs> I was so excited to see the prairie dogs. I don't know why I was so excited to see them. I guess I didn't expect to see them. So when their little heads was all popped up, and their little tails come out and they were squeak, squeak, squeaking. It was like such a good moment in my life. The buffalo, that was that was awesome. Really liked South Dakota, just like the area, the country was beautiful. I like Colorado mountains. Would I wanna do the trip again? Absolutely. I got, I'd leave tomorrow going. I don't enjoy leaving my animals here and one week is better for me than three weeks, but I'd go tomorrow. Um, did I like the motorhome or the van better? I didn't really learn anything, I don't think. Probably the worst part of the trip was how stressed out that Josh got. Like for two days, he was really in a bad place. I'm really surprised by this because usually if something happens, I'm the one that's stressed out and it's not a big deal to him. It was such a big deal to him. And I'm like, we'll just be here in South Dakota. Like, we'll just hang out here for a while, you know, whatever. And he was just, he had it in his mind to go to all these different places. He's very much of a list person, so all this was on his list, and he wasn't getting to do his list, and it really messed him up. One of the best parts of the trip was meeting different people that were so very kind and friendly. We ran into some really nice people that were just super great. I had a good time. I'd go again. It was great. Bye. And we really appreciate everybody that reached out. We had several people email us. We had people trying to send us money, trying to help best they could. People that were several hours away told me I could park the motorhome on their property. And the way we ended up selling it was through a viewer's friend had bought it. So we really appreciate everybody's help that reached out to help us. It wasn't really a financial problem. It was more of just uh, trying to get rid of a motorhome because we can't bring it home problem but I do appreciate the people that reached out trying to send us money, even though we didn't take it. But yeah, it's amazing the, all the help that you guys, uh, we really appreciate that. Well, we got back late last night. So the 5,000 mile trip in a motorhome to see the American West turned into a 
3,500 mile trip, about 1,500 miles of it was in the motorhome and about 2,000 miles in the minivan. What'd you guys think? I, I mean, I wish it would've turned out better, but yeah, it was fun. I would do it again. I, uh, I would not. Oh my God. I kid. would in a more reliable car. You know, I wasn't as stressed in this motorhome. Not at all. And broke down as I normally would have been. I don't know why. You were sure because you had like a home still? I guess because I was, had snacks. I don't know. It's nice to like, even though you broke down, you still have like all your stuff. You have, you have running water and air conditioning if you want. I wouldn't take off tomorrow in a motorhome with just got. I should have done more preparation. Should have done more test driving it, I guess, but that's how things like this go. It was very hard on the old envelope. I mean, this is an envelope we actually used. It, it was tough financially on this trip, yeah. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was tough on the old envelope. You know, vacations are expensive. It's all about the memories you make. Um, we made memories. I really enjoyed seeing the Buffalo and seeing some of those real deal Western towns where all these things happen I've heard about my whole life. I like seeing the mammoth site. That was really cool. Seeing the dinosaur stuff. That's supposedly the best spot in America to see dinosaur bones. I really wish we would have been able to make it to Yellowstone. We would have had to drive another thousand miles to see Yellowstone. And the North Loop is closed right now because of uh, the rain. Yeah, I wish we would have got to see some more things in, in Colorado and shown the kids how Utah Monument Valley looked. That was the plan. See the Grand Canyon. But next time. Next time. Here's Maybe you'll see a future video of us trying to finish out this trip. So here's the real question. Can I open an RC Cola in the house oh no, no. without oh, blowing it on the make, ceiling? Don't you make a mess on my floor. Look at me go. Good job. Good job. Well, I didn't have you get it for me. That's the difference, but... <laughs> It didn't turn out the way we wanted it to. It wasn't the fairy tale trip we were planning, 5,000 miles without a breakdown. You know, we made the best of it. That's why I didn't work on the motorhome forever and try to fix it and continue on because I really wanted them to not be stuck in the middle of South Dakota with me at the Flying J truck stop working on it. We had fun. We had 3,500 miles of seeing stuff. We got to see a lot of cool things. So I guess we'll have to finish this trip off a different time in a different vehicle. Yes, different vehicle. You know how we end them off here? Drink your RC Colas, eat your Vanias. It's the only thing that kept us alive on the side of the highway <laughs> was the fact that we eat so many Vanias and we're so healthy. I'm just kidding. That is... Look, he's ready. Oh, Scooty, so they can't see him. Scooty's so ready for a Vania oh, he's right sit. now. He's sitting. Here, you gotta get up here. Right. Mmm, that's all good. Here you go, Scooty. Ooh. <laughs> Oh man. You take your fingers off. We will see you <laughs> in the next video. I don't know what we're going to do from here about motorhome stuff. I don't know if we're going to try to fix the mini Winnie. Right now, I'm kind of bummed out about the whole motorhome deal. Here you go. Calm down. Please. I don't know if we're going to fix the mini Winnie, honestly, if I'm just being completely honest. Whoa, if man. I maybe buy a different motorhome, a different size, I'm not sure. You'll see plenty of videos to come of all our project cars around here. Thank you so stuff. much to everybody that reached out and had kind words and all that. That was very nice of you. We really appreciate everybody that was offered help. Joe offered, Garcia. Yes. Thank you very much to Joe Garcia in Rapid City, South Dakota. He was a huge help to us. He didn't know us from anybody. He, he was the only person that stopped on the side of the interstate. Gave us a ride to the airport, offered us a ride to a motel. He was a huge help. There's still good people out there like Joe Garcia, and we really appreciate his help. I guess we'll see you in the next video. We gotta get back on the Malibu. We gotta get on the Fairmonts. I need to get on the Blue Dark Coupe and the White Savoy. You can check out our second channel app. And you can check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at SleeperDude88. We will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, guys. We and really appreciate it. Make sure you subscribe. Slap that like button and subscribe. There's merch below. Yeah, you heard it. Merch drop. Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> what in the world? <laughs> we appreciate you watching. We couldn't do this without you.